Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. This is my third video um, made from um, some friends' house, and um, I'm visiting and having a good time. So bear with me and everything around me. So we <laughs> I have a, a very interesting video here uh, on an article and some statements that a Russian ambassador made. And the statements are not surprising to me. They are confirming something I've been saying for uh, at least one year. And that is the Russians are not fighting in Ukraine. But I, I said about 5%. And everybody was like, oh my God, what are you talking about? You know how much is employed in that war? I know how much is employed in it. How much the Russians are, are involved in it. That's why I'm saying it's 5%. Why? From the potential. If you think that this is the potential, the maximum, the Russians, you know, they reach the, the maximum potential of their uh, military attacks on whomever is on the other side, uh, you know what I mean, uh, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, they have maybe 600,000 people involved all together since the beginning of this war, and they have a uh, Potential of about uh, 30, 30 million, three zero, three zero, yeah, three zero million, you know, of uh, uh, Russians who could be, uh, if you know, mobilized in case of, let's say, world war. Just look at their population. So it's not only that, but this um, ambassador, who obviously is uh, about to minimize their um, his country's losses or in success. And he's going to maximize, um, you know, anything that they uh, succeeded in uh, achieving. So let's see this article coming from uh, Sputnik, obviously. And um, it is from two hours ago today on May 28th, 2023. Russian ambassador to UK, and I'm quoting, We haven't yet started to act seriously in Ukraine. That's... Not saying that he didn't ask, uh, uh, act serious, seriously yet, but 5%, uh, which was my uh, involvement, I think it's not a serious. Uh, but anyway, we'll find out later when information is allowed to trickle down to us. So Russia's ambassador to UK, Andrei Kelin, warned Western countries against committing more military support for the Kiev regime as part of the ongoing proxy war with Moscow saying this would be fraught with further dangerous escalation of the conflagration. Russia has not even begun to, and I'm quoting, act very seriously in Ukraine, Andrei Kalin, Russia's ambassador to the UK, stated in an interview with the BBC. And I'm quoting, it is a big idealistic mistake to think that Ukraine will prevail. Russia is 16 times bigger than Ukraine. We have enormous resources and we haven't just started yet to act very seriously. End quote. He said, well, I don't think that this thing with 16 times bigger necessarily plays a role because uh, you can look, for instance, in Vietnam and you can analyze that as it was. It's true that Vietnamese, uh, the Vietnamese were also helped by someone much bigger than them. And then they were, and uh, you know the results. But uh, you can't minimize the whatever the the, Viet the Vietnamese did in that war, which is fight like crazy. And I don't know if their Americans were again fighting that war 100%. Um, I personally don't think, obviously, they were fighting 100% over there. Uh, from uh, whatever I read and information I got, again, it seems like the military was uh, harnessed which I, it's hard for me to believe that in the 68, 69, 70, uh, the military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us in what in 50 some um, is, uh, did, not got, did not get a grip on everything. I don't believe that. But anyway, people say, well, they didn't get uh, the resources they needed because of goddamn um, politicians and all that. Yes, possibly, but I think it's the other way around. The politicians are over there because... Uh, those guys are allowing them to be over there. It's not like the other way around. Like, oh, we're going to give you this amount of money and resources. No, we're going to let you run for your office and stay over there. Give us what we want. Uh, let us be important in wars because that's when the generals shine. 
In peacetime, you don't hear about any general. So uh, don't you think they have an ego? I guarantee you they have ego. So why? Because for them, that's a trampoline, punk, punk, punk springboard to uh, political life. So without that, who's going to hear about whom? So um, uh, there's a lot of ambitious generals over there who use war as a uh, look at John Kerry, look at McCain, look at and they were not generals by any, you know, uh, look at others. Uh, Eisenhower is a perfect example, who obviously uh, worked politically. Colin Powell did not want to do that, but I think he was too ashamed. Schwarzkopf for what? For Desert Storm fighting a 20 million people, again, country with a rusty military in the desert and with a coalition. I have my uh, assessments of that. And anyway, I like uh, value, valor. That's what I like. I like quality. And um, anyway, let's move on here. And uh, so the argument this ambassador makes, I think, is it is true most of the time, but it depends. Take the example of Israel. I mean, besides the fact that Israel is, again, supported by United States of America and so on, but it and uh, how do you call it, uh, unofficially, they have nuclear weapons. So what are you going to do? And I am very, very inclined to think that uh, if Israel gets seriously challenged by anyone, they will have no problem in using uh, that arsenal uh, for self-defense, obviously. So let's move on with this article here. So as Britain, the United States their other NATO allies continue to, this is, remember, Sputnik, to pump Ukraine with weapons, to prop up the regime of Zelensky, like the US supplied Storm Shadow cruise missiles, they risk bringing a, and I'm quoting, new dimension to the conflict, the envoy warned. And I'm quoting again, it depends on the escalation of war that is taking place. Sooner or later, this escalation might have a new dimension that we do not need and we do not want. Uh, I'm guessing, uh, you know, tactical nuclear weapons used. We can make peace tomorrow if the Ukrainian side will be prepared to negotiate, but there are no preconditions for that. Uh, well, the thing is, um, no, it's not Ukraine side. Yeah, maybe Ukraine side is a good, uh, you know, choice of words here, because it's not Ukraine over there. You need to talk, you need to talk to someone else. The Russian envoy clarified that to understand the true nature of the regime holed up in Kiev, one should recognize that Ukraine's authorities have been waging war on the residents of Donbass since 2014. Something that the West media just doesn't uh, like to promote or, uh, or talk about obsessively as other crimes. And I'm quoting, we want peace. We, in what terms? Remember that Napoleon Bonaparte. I, I love peace. I like peace. As long as it's done on my terms. So we all like peace, but hey, give me your house. And then we're going to have peace. And then I ask you, hey, why do you want to fight me, man? Why you got my house? So we want no threat from Ukraine to Russia. This is one thing. And second, the Russians in Ukraine will be treated like all other nations in the world. Like a French person in Ukraine. We are just defending the lands which are under control and assisting Russian people over there. We are rebuilding the Donbass, Andrei Kalin said. The ambassador also reiterated the position of the Kremlin regarding weapons shipments to Ukraine as prolonging the conflict. So basically you give them more, um, more weapons, we're going to uh, do more for those guys. So he says, if supplies of weapons will be stopped, it will be stopped the day after tomorrow. Please stop it. Indeed, as, uh, as the Russian envoy to the UK stated in the interview, when the legis legitimacy elected, legitimately elected president of Ukraine was forcibly toppled by the violent US-backed opposition and neo-Nazi parliamentary groups in 2014, that's according to the Russians, right? The mostly Russian-speaking people in Donbass did not accept the coup d'etat for refusing to comply with the Russophobic agenda and banning of Russian language, the Kiev regime subjected Donbass to relentless attacks that claimed thousands of civilians' lives over the past years. Now, 
This is something the media in the West will uh, tell you, but then they will immediately say that the Russians are the bad ones because they are, according to them. Moscow was forced to finally act in February 2022 after DPR and LPR appeared to help, appealed for help to defend themselves against Ukrainian provocation. It launched a special military operation aimed at stopping the eight-year-long extermination of Russian-speaking people by the Ukrainian leadership. So this is their view on the war. This is their reason that they put forth, you know, to justify what's going on over there. Um, do you think uh, there is some truth in that? Well, I don't think it's just some truth in that. There are evidence, facts, and those things should be investigated, put forth, and let's have a conversation. But um, you have this only when you want to solve a problem. I don't think certain interests do not want to solve that problem. They have a bigger fish to fry, and that is Russia. Russia. So they didn't start yet. I, I'm seriously, very seriously. Um, so they are seriously, but not very seriously. I think they are not yet, and I hope they don't get that point. But if these guys are going to keep uh, trying to grind the Russian economy and military and society with their sanctions and weapon supplies to Ukraine, then the Russians will, uh, you know, up their game, unfortunately. And uh, we also will be affected, unfortunately, because these elected officials of ours, uh, they send money as it's their money. Someone that I've been, I've been not asked if I want my money to go over there. I didn't vote for that. I didn't vote for them to give Ukraine shit. Let's put it this way. Or anybody else. But hey, this is democracy for you, which needs a lot of tweaking. Actually, you need a big hammer to break it and then put it together in a different form. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.